Hello everyone, Ivy here. This podcast is about recent events, sad events, regarding the news of Harry and Meghan's miscarriage. I find it difficult to put into words my disgust about the things I've read, the responses from various quarters. And this podcast is a long time coming in as much that I had to remove many of the bullet points that I was going to include because really I am so so angry and disappointed about it Um, but I want to put forward a constructive podcast and an accompanying article and finally I've now got the finished product. I hope that you find it interesting, um, informative and hopefully gives you um, cause for reflection. So, this podcast is entitled, United Kingdom, Are You OK? How are you? I mean, really, how are you? Are you OK? This is the country of my birth, and to say I am disappointed and angry at what I see every day now, whether it be the media or daily life, is an understatement. The UK has become a place where I do not want to spend my senior years. The UK has become a place where organisations and individuals can profit from promoting hatred of certain groups in society. The reason that those entities continue to profit is because there are people out there who want to read and hear about it and their comment sections are inundated every day with new entries spouting hatred about certain groups in society. The marginalised groups cease to be considered living and breathing people, and nothing more than a product on a store shelf that has been commoditised. People have died as a result of this treatment, and many more are living with the mental health implications of such treatment. The way any society treats its vulnerable citizens is an indicator of the condition of its heart. When the vulnerable cease to be regarded as living, breathing, sentient beings, then that society is in decay and is dying from the inside. This piece is about the actions of a nation and the way it has treated one person of colour who can be identified in many of the marginalised groups mentioned above and who cease to be regarded as a human being with emotions within weeks of being known as the girlfriend of a prince in the royal family. The Duchess has been a figure of hate for the royal family and its media propaganda team from very early on, when it was clear that this strong lady was not going to play the docile woman role like all other female members of that family. This person of colour entered the British royal family as a millionaire several times over. No other female in that family had those types of resources, and she definitely did not enter the fray feeling grateful, but was there because of the man she loved. The fact that the British royal family and the media did not like a strong female in the firm, was used as a foundation to create a character for the nation to hate. Articles and the same group of TV programmes ran with this approach since 2016. Initially, the message to the international community was that Meghan was welcomed, but inside the coastline of the UK, it was the complete opposite. Meghan Duchess of Sussex became something to monetise and ceased to be a person who anyone needed to worry about the impact of their activities would cause. The idea was to break her spirit so that she would comply, or better still, she would leave her husband and return to the USA. In the interim, the aim was to generate as much income as possible from the hate-filled overcritical analysis 
of every move Megan made and every breath she took each day. The media realised that hatred was a selling point in an otherwise failing industry in terms of income generation. Accounts on social media platforms were being set up filled with hatred. Any charity that Sussexes worked with had and still do today have their comment section filled with hateful posts. All the Sussex charities love working with Harry and Meghan. It is obvious that every one of them benefit from the Sussex squad support. So the hateful posts and comments are clearly satisfying an unhealthy need for some individuals to see their comments in print in order to feel good about themselves. They and the institutions who sanction this behaviour are all operating in an out-of-date approach and ultimately they will be responsible for their own demise. What the British family, the British royal family I should say, and media pals did not take into account was the emergence of the Sussex squad. A group of supporters who could see the dangerous game being played and set out to defend Meghan and very quickly Harry too. The squad is an international support network. We are not fans. We are way more than that and the UK is beginning to realise this daily. The international database of receipts of this hateful activity will provide history with facts, not the spin that the UK monarchy and its pals want to portray. The latest disgusting prolific words of hate and cruelty about the news of Meghan suffering a miscarriage in July is truly scraping the barrel type of activity. And the fact that the nation's newspaper industry is leading the charge in the UK speaks volumes. The positive counterbalance of that approach is the way the international community is reporting this truly heartbreaking experience that so many women go through is in direct contrast to the UK. Like so many things, the UK is out of step with the majority of the world on this subject. And it reinforces the message that no longer will UK media control the narrative on how the rest of the world view life inside this increasingly hate-filled, backward-looking, arrogant country. When it comes to the Sussexes, who have moved away from the abuse of the UK and paid all the debts that the country decided they owed, including 2.4 million of the renovation of a property that was given as a wedding gift by the Queen, a property they did not own, but because of the daily whining in the press, the Sussexes paid all the renovation costs and rent in advance by many years. Still, the hate-filled rhetoric continued. This latest round of vitriol has really got under my skin, hence this article and podcast. When a nation feels comfortable in denigrating a woman for writing about her emotions during and following a miscarriage and asks for understanding about the range of emotions felt by women in this position, then it is an indicator that the society in question has reached the bottom of the toxic tank. Megan explained in a powerful academic piece about things the society and help groups can do, which is helpful to couples who have experienced loss of this nature, as well as showing interest to people in the community or circle of friends by opening up dialogue, as opposed to making assumptions by asking, are you okay? At a time when the UK is declaring UDI, Unilateral Declaration of Independence, with the world, in particular Europe. It does not bode well for world trade. The sheer volume of negative articles and panel discussions on UK TV is disheartening. 
In one year alone, over a quarter million articles were published in the tabloids about Meghan, most of which were negative, including the insanity of her eating avocados for breakfast was the cause of wars elsewhere in the world, and putting her hands on her own pregnancy bump was attention-seeking. But articles of other members of the royal family doing the same things were written in glowing positive terms. Megan has been told that the criticism comes with royal life and that she should deal with it. Yet the recent furore over the Netflix series of The Crown, Series 4, has ruffled the feathers of the British royal family and has now led to them switching off comments on Prince Charles' social media account less than a week after an episode aired. The comments were apparently not supportive of the way Prince Charles treated his wife, Princess Diana. So, please note that the comment facility was switched off within a few days of one episode airing on Netflix, but yet, four plus years later, all manner of hate-filled and threats to health and safety comments have been left in the public view, and there is no sign of any moderation on those accounts, unless anyone posts criticism relating to any other member of the royal family. The latest venom-filled comment section on royal social media accounts pertain to the miscarriage. I personally blocked all royal social media accounts from my view years ago, but I have seen the one-off slip through on another platform where people have copied the comment and posted their disgust about it on another platform. The ones I have read broke my heart. How Meghan and Harry must feel about reading these I can only imagine. In terms of the racism on display in most of these vitriolic comments, the receipts exist and go back to 2016. Many royal reporters have deleted comments made previously, but receipts exist, so they need to think on before they post. Some of them have taken to attempt at being clever by the use of certain words. Taken as a whole collection, the point that they are trying to make has not been masked. And as I say, receipts exist. This hate-filled activity is causing long-term damage to the UK. And in terms of any future agreements with the Commonwealth and the USA, to name just a few, let alone Europe itself. The fallout of Windrush is ongoing and the employment of a person of colour to lead on the unjust activities does not change anything. Coconuts exist everywhere. All of them find out further down the line that they are expendable compared to their white colleagues when the going gets rough. The next deportation of people back to Jamaica is due to take place on the 2nd of December. It is yet another indicator of the underbelly of the UK. The current government, in conjunction with the Bridge Royal family and the help of the media, are ensuring that they protect each other. The system is set where they cannot be questioned too deeply on anything and each group receives public funds to keep their place in society when the evidence suggests that they cannot read the room and continue to employ out-of-date propaganda tactics to quell the noise of discontent. The British media have created a landing page for racist posts in their social media accounts and their tabloids. Unlike other members of the royal family, Meghan was never protected on any platform for the four plus years she has been a member of the said family. When the Sussexes moved to the USA, most of the information on Meghan was removed from the official royal family website. Yet, despite one of that family reportedly being the lead on anti-bullying, it has been deemed acceptable to leave all those disgusting posts about Meghan including a torrent of nasty posts about the miscarriage, 
but remove the comment section facility after a few days about people com commenting truthfully about Prince Charles and his treatment of his then wife. The double standards is so obvious. What does this say about the UK and its continual abuse of the only person of colour in that family? What message does it send to the Commonwealth? What message does it send to people of colour at the other end of the resource spectrum in the UK? Basically, the risks and the probability of being on the receiving end of unwarranted and debilitating treatment is extremely high. Let's not forget Harry and Meghan's grief in this. I have mentioned all of the above to give a summary of the UK today. Those individuals and institutions behaving in this way are loud, but they are not the majority. It is unfortunate that they are in positions of power. This is the backdrop to an environment that Harry and Meghan tried to function in. This is the backdrop as to why their health and safety was put at risk daily. This is the backdrop as to how one right-wing group openly set out to end the life of Prince Harry and openly conducted their war of attrition because they regarded him as a race traitor. Prison sentences are currently in place, but there are plenty more waiting in the wings. This is the backdrop to an environment where the royal family wanted to appear inclusive to the world, but in reality did not feel comfortable with a black woman in their fraternity. This is the backdrop to an institution that actively worked with others to break the resolve of Meghan in the hope that she would leave and return to the USA. Do you think a high profile TV presenter would repeatedly tell a member of the royal family to go back to their own country if he did not have the sanction of the Queen? Make no mistake. The argument that the Queen does not know certain things is only used when the royal family look bad. But when the media and courtiers want the world to think that the Queen is in control, the picture painted is one of having her finger on the pulse every day and who is someone who cannot be disobeyed. Someone who is ruling the monarchy with an iron fist. Yeah. This is the backdrop when a woman entering that family are meant to be compliant and grateful to be there. When they have intelligence and know their worth, it does not go down well. When your father-in-law refers to you as Teflon, it is not an endearment. It is a red flag that says she has to be taken down. This is the backdrop when the UK government supports the monarchy, no matter what. A monarchy comprised of all Caucasian people. The majority of the British people had no issue with Meghan, at least not enough to feel compelled to speak about her negatively day after day. The UK media did their job, as instructed, and created a narrative over the last four years that Meghan was not a suitable person for the royal family and the carefully worded articles when placed alongside other members of the royal family doing similar things is glaringly obvious the game that was being played. The antics of the UK tabloid press ultimately led to legal proceedings. As the royal family cannot be taken to court, their voice in the media can be. Hence, we are where we are. Global news networks became involved due to the increasing interest and thankfully articles of facts about the work the societies were doing were reported on and not simply the latest outfit or some non-existent protocol breach.
The gutter behaviour of the royal rotor ensured that Harry and Meghan would never work with him again once they stepped back from being senior royals. The newspaper articles and TV coverage on the international stage has been heartwarming. The news of the miscarriage has been handled with respect and admiration for Meghan's article in the New York Times. Increasing numbers of support groups are praising Meghan for speaking out and expressing their thanks on the helpful nature of the quality content and information that will help many people. Helplines have reported a sudden increase in the numbers of people coming forward to talk about their experience of miscarriage, some of them from many years ago, when it was deemed unacceptable to talk about it. The current backdrop in the UK is that Meghan was wrong to write the piece, even though there are examples of other royal family members who have done just that. Zara Phillips, daughter of Princess Anne, gave interviews with the Sunday Times and the BBC years ago, both stalwarts of the British establishment. Zara experienced two miscarriages and was treated with respect throughout. Sophie Wessex also spoke to the press, the Daily Telegraph in this case. The reporting was sympathetic and respectful. Quotes from both husbands were included in the articles. Fast forward to Meghan, who suffered a miscarriage in July and who made the information public a few days ago in November 2020. Every nation who has commented on it has been respectful and indeed complimentary about the message conveyed, except the, U the UK. The central theme of Meghan's article was about being kind to each other, encouraging people to ask others, are you okay? This is the backdrop in the UK, where the majority of the coverage was not only negative, but was also extremely toxic, vile, hateful, and in too many cases, people took delight in the pain being experienced. Other sad souls did not believe a pregnancy existed, let alone a miscarriage. The toxic activity sitting on so many platforms in the UK, with no moderation visible, is a reflection of the UK today. To use an academic model as a way of explaining this phenomenon in the UK is to say to decent people, look at the top of any structure of any organisation. Look at the team at the top that supports the chief executive officer or equivalent. Employees only behave in the ways that their immediate line manager allows. Each tier above that line manager is doing the same, and so on. Therefore, in UK Incorporated, look at the top teams. Government known for using racist terminology in respect of people of colour. A government responsible for taking no meaningful action following the report on the Grenfell Tower fire. A government who is responsible for Windrush and the ongoing fallout. As I said, another deportation is due on the 2nd of December. A team of tabloid journalists employed to report on the British royal family in a favourable tone. No criticism or very little. The media wanted and expected access to the Sussexes, just like they had with the rest of the British royal family. The difference was that there was global interest in Harry and Meghan, which meant huge income generation possibilities for the toxic articles. Money was being made when said articles were challenged as well as praised. Clickbait headlines ensured money in the bank. Somewhere, a long time ago, Harry and Meghan as a young couple starting married life 
and wanting to do humanitarian projects got forgotten. All care and empathy and common decency left the building. Harry refused to work with any of the Royal Rotor again. He no longer is forced to do so. He was free from them. So imagine the UK media feeling and seeing the USA media get all the scoops and photos first. UK media has to pay for access to photos and receive the information hours after they all published they're all published in the USA. So Zara and Sophie talking to UK tabloids was inevitable because they were not allowed to talk to anyone else. If Meghan was still a senior member of the royal family, I doubt she would have been allowed to say anything about her miscarriage, and if she did, the articles would not have been favourable, and they would have been with the Royal Rota. When over a million articles have been written about Meghan alone, let alone others with Harry, and when most of that figure was negative, toxic content over the four years, is it any wonder that Harry said, enough? And now, the ongoing court case. It is clear that UK media are angry that they no longer have access to Harry and Meghan for media publications, and they can only be lone voices in the wind, spouting their vitriolic content. It warms my heart that their favourite and most income-generating chew toy decided to walk away from the whole lot and to allow for their mental health to recover and to be able to live their lives with their basic human rights intact and respected. A secret society no one wants to be a member of. That's the pain of miscarriage. It is an experience that is so hard to put into words and most cannot speak about it in the minutes and the weeks and the months after the loss. It is a loss that years after the event, the loss is as raw as within the seconds as it was occurring. One just learns to mask it better for the concern of others around them. I have, over the years, worked with many women's groups on many topics, including the loss of a baby or babies. No matter when it happened, the feelings remain the same. It is a subject that makes the couples involved vulnerable when they talk about it, recall events, and their thoughts at various times. With that in mind, when I read some of the cruel comments some really vile individuals left on various social media platforms, I know how Megan and other ladies who have experienced such loss would feel if they read them, no matter how close or far away from the occurrence. To all those reading or listening to this podcast, if you know of anyone who has taken part in this activity and there is some semblance of a soul still left in them, please get them to try and consider the following points in no particular order. This list is as they come to me remembering conversations with a number of women and sometimes their partners over the years in a variety of settings. One thing was always evident. The grief remains. In the seconds you sense that your baby is leaving your body, you start to shut down certain parts of your brain. Pain, if you have it, along with a fear you have never experienced the like of before.
your body contracting in waves like it is giving birth, no matter where you are in the pregnancy cycle. Different types of contractions depending how far along you are, but you have them and you can feel them coming. The juxtaposition of this cocktail of bodily functions is a terrible thing to experience. The feeling of helplessness cannot be described and it is a trauma that stays with you for life. Those who have experienced such things many years ago did not hear terms like PTSD. You were on your own with your feelings. The evacuation of one's mind and body throughout all this is horrific. The sight of pregnant women or women with young babies would be a trigger for inner turmoil for many months after the event. Years ago, ladies post miscarriage were placed on maternity wards with women who were pregnant or who had just given birth or who were in labor. The number of women who broke down completely retelling me the stories, some of them from 40 to 50 years ago, was immense and very moving. For weeks after this horrific experience, parts of your body still thinks it is pregnant. It is the most haunting out of body experience that reduces many to their knees. Parts of your body thinks you have given birth, which is another unseen trauma women experience. I read one post on a social media page where four images of Megan taken in July with comments how she looked happy and glowing and that there was no way she looked as if she had just experienced a miscarriage. To the fool posted that, if you have duties to perform and dates in your calendar where people are relying on you, you can leave your home and perform. If it is a subject one cares about deeply, words will flow naturally, no script required. People like the idiot who posted such cruel comments in that post should know that most people who suffer the loss of a baby, particularly in the first few weeks, where your body is doing things outside of your control and your mind is moving around in an erratic way, one can show up for an hour or two, do what they have to do, and then go home and collapse in a heap. Most days, it is hard enough to pull a comb through one's hair. If there are younger children in the household, parents do what they have to do. You go into robotic mode, and to some degree, one's mind is taken away from the sad recent experiences. But you don't venture and to go outside unless you feel that you have the strength to engage in conversations from anyone who asks how, how your pregnancy is going. Words, even when well-meant, can hurt and sting. Words written with vitriolic content are meant to hurt, but the posters have no idea or regard for the lasting impact those words may have at the time or weeks down the line. I read part of an article by one of the Royal Rota clan who stated that they had experienced a miscarriage and basically was not in agreement with Megan's article at all. The phrase which stood out for me was that she said Megan had invaded her own privacy in writing the article. 
and that would prove to be damaging to the legal case. First of all, this is just jealousy that the UK royal reporters do not have access to the Sussexes and all the nonsense they write is based on second-hand knowledge of USA articles many hours down the line. So much of their rubbish is based on jealousy of no access to any article that has gone global and is being praised. Secondly, how can one invade their own privacy? The Sussexes seeking to have more privacy when they left the UK did not and does not mean that they will go and live in a cave where no one will see them again for decades. Certain people in the royal family would like that because they are convinced that the heirs to the throne will shine brightly and the public and the world will adore them. The royal family and its media are delusional. The Sussexes are public figures and expect there to be interest in their projects. But in terms of their private life, everyone is entitled to a private life and they have the right to talk about any aspect of it they choose. It is not for a tabloid to dictate what aspects of a private life should be revealed and when. It is a basic human right and is the element, the same element, of the Human Rights Act that Prince William's legal team used to quell reporting on his activities outside of royal duties, that is to say, Article 8. If the Sussexes choose to talk about miscarriage and the benefits of conversations around the subject and to inquire if people are okay, it is in no way harming their legal case. This was just a sour grapes article because UK media had no control over the narrative or the timing. In fact, they are surplus to Harry and Meghan's requirements and will remain so, regardless of the outcome of the legal action. I just wish to close this piece by saying that words are powerful. Words can hurt. Unless you have never experienced a miscarriage or you are one of the rare people who believe that being repressed is healthy for one's mental health, then just know that the grief over any miscarriage never goes away. The grief takes many forms over the years, but it is still the loss of a child. All this hate-filled rhetoric that the UK in particular is embarking on daily will be one of the main pillars of society, one of the main pillars of activity, which will lead to the downfall of the many of the other pillars of British society. Because it's a weak link in the support system. People have died as a direct result of harassment and bullying in the media. If the only way a newspaper believes it can earn an income is by tearing down others, then it is time to rethink the line of work. Death or destruction of lives is not a key performance indicator to have on one's balance sheet. No tabloid should be anything but a litter tray liner because it is not mainstream news. If tabloid fodder is the only thing that the royal family can rely on to report its activities in a positive way, then again, there should be a major rethink about the need for a monarchy. The world has come to see the UK as a racist and uncaring nation. Just because tabloids report the UK is still great, don't be fooled. We are on a slippery slope. Brexit just around the corner and Covid running rings around certain governments, the UK being one. This idea that we can tell 
a person of colour in the royal family to go back to their own country. Thinking that Prince Harry is like all the other spineless royal males in that family just proves how out of touch with reality the royal family is in this day and age. They and the media have treated Meghan like something under their shoes and now treat Harry like he is a traitor to his country. Why would he return to the UK after watching the continual abuse of his wife and son and this latest regarding the miscarriage and all the comments still left on public view on all royal social media accounts. Why would Prince Harry even look in their direction after the wreath incident and now to compound their horrific behaviour, no support for Meghan in this post miscarriage timeline. It is disgusting and disrespectful to Meghan and to all women and their partners who have experienced such loss. The aim was for her to lose her first baby. So I am not surprised about their attitude towards this one. Meghan and Harry will be fine without the UK. The UK cannot say the same. Meghan and Harry are already living a better quality of life without the chains of the British royal family. Meghan and Harry will be global successes and are already global icons. None of the British royal family could even dream of achieving that. Most can just about read. The level of cruelty and actions towards the Sussexes these last four years will come back to haunt all those who cause them pain and distress. I wish for karma to visit every one of the haters and return the favour tenfold and to pass it on to all of their loved ones. Celebration or critique of how a person deals with the loss of a child is wrong. No justification for it and all the comments relating to Megan, miscarriage or otherwise, should be removed. If other snowflakes in the royal family can have whole comment sections closed down for people speaking about actual events truthfully, then the same should be done for hate speech. People are important, not just the heirs to the throne. And when one of those heirs likes to claim he is an advocate for anti-bullying, then there should be some semblance of that in evidence on their website and social media accounts. We all have been told that he's bored with racism, so there is nothing expected on that front. And just to end on, a repeat of what I said at the beginning. The way a society treats the vulnerable is a very good indicator of the health of that society. Right now, the UK is on life support. And that's all I'm going to say on this subject. It's been very difficult for me. I can't imagine how it has been for Megan and women in those positions who have lost a child or children. The venom has just been off the scale, so cruel. I hope you have found this of use. I hope it has touched in the right way people's hearts. And if even one of the haters should they even be informed about this article or they read it and understand, change one modicum of their behaviour, it will have done something. Because no society can continue the way many countries, UK included, is operating at the moment. It's just not right. Let's all remember, take care of each other and to inquire, as Megan says, Ask them, are they okay?